Thank you, Molly, and good evening. Welcome to University Baptist Church on this Christmas Eve, the final day of Advent, December 24th, 2020. For anyone watching who doesn't know me, my name is David Tomasachi, and I'm the Director of Music here at University Baptist Church. At any time, you can pause and check out this video's description to see listed there today's worship order, leaders, and musicians. I'll also take this moment to invite each of you to sing along during all of our congregational carols throughout this service. During O Come All Ye Faithful, One Candle is Lit, Away in a Manger, Silent Night, and Joy to the World. At this time, you may want to pause this video and scroll down to the comment section where you'll find a link to a PDF with the lyrics to all of these carols. In tonight's service, you'll hear three archival pieces from the UBC Choir, the anthems Heavenly Light by Alexander Kopilov, While Shepherds Watched Their Sheep, and Luke's Arumque by Eric Whitaker. The words to Whitaker's Luke's Arumque were written by poet Edward Esch. Translated by Charles Anthony Silvestri, they read, Light, warm and heavy as pure gold and the angels sing softly to the newborn babe. Throughout tonight's service, you'll also see greetings and virtual Christmas cards from members and friends of University Baptist Church. My thanks to all who contributed a video greeting for this service. I'd also like to thank everyone involved in putting together this service over the past two months. My thanks to Ari for her talents and time in putting together this video. To our scripture readers, Natasha, Joseph, Drew, and Aaron, and to Helen Watkins for the candle lighting. To Pastor Ken for two months of emails and Zoom meetings working on this service. To Sandy Charisse for all of her work editing and coordinating the recordings of O Come All Ye Faithful, One Candle is Lit, Away in a Manger, Silent Night, and Joy to the World. To Molly Rausch and our UBC section leaders, Alyssa Schott, Sandy, Jacob Pantelukas, and David Scott. 
to my friend and Columbus City Schools band director Alex Gerhard for recording trumpet parts, and to Dr. Robert Lunn and my dear friend from that state up north who granted permission and recorded for us his arrangement of Silent Night on guitar for our passing of the light this evening. And now I invite you all to rise in your spirits and join us in singing our gathering carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. Merry Christmas. Welcome to University Baptist Church. Love you. Feliz Navidad. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Gutierrez. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Feliz Navidad. Hi, UBC family. This is Drew Barkley. And I'm Sarah Jones. And we are wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. Hope you all have a great holiday season. A Christmas message to you from the Alliance of Baptists. I will light candles this Christmas. Candles of joy despite all sadness. Candles of hope where despair keeps watch. Candles of courage where fear is ever present. 
Candles of peace for tempest-tossed days. Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of love to inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all the year long. As you light candles this season, our friends at University Baptist Church, may the gifts of the season be yours. Hope, peace, joy, and love. Merry Christmas from the Alliance of Baptists. Hello, I'm Ken Watkins. I'm the Associate Pastor at University Baptist Church, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and most of you know me. Uh, this is sort of a family time, but uh, I hope that we have others who, are, who join us. And if you're new to us, then I welcome you. This is my wife, Helen. Uh, tonight, it's our honor to light the uh, the Christ candle uh, for all during Advent. Uh, we have been lighting candles on the on the on the Sundays of, of Advent. Um, we have lit a candle for for hope. We've lit a candle for peace, one for joy, and, and one for love. Tonight we light the Christ candle. Rejoice, people of God! The light has come into the world. O oh God, now we light the candle of your nativity. With the company of heaven and with, with sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is the time of light and resplendent joy. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels. Glory, peace on earth and goodwill. John declared that the great light is Christ, the word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity we now rejoice. God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thanks for touching all heaven and earth with your splendor. In every corner of the world shines this night with your peace. In every corner of our hearts shine this night with, with your grace. Amen. Shine, shine on, on us, O God, God of justice. justice. Guide our path through gloom of night. Bear within us wisdom's glory. Come to us, O Christ the light. Glory be to God and peace on earth. Christ is born. Alleluia. everybody. Merry Christmas Eve. Missing everyone. Wish we were in church tonight. We're really going to miss being with everyone and lighting the candles and singing Silent Night together and being able to um, hold hands and be together. But we'll light a candle here for everyone and next year we'll all be together again. Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. My name's Marissa. I just wanted to tell you to have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Hi everyone. This is Sally and Blitzen. 
wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy 2021. Miss you. Hello, this is Father Ed Novak, the director of the St. Thomas More Newman Center, your neighbor from across the garden pathway, wishing you all a very safe, healthy, and joyful Christmas. Merry Christmas. God's blessings to you all. Tonight's scripture reading comes from the book of John, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the, world be the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
Kim Spengler. I'm Helen Spengler. And we, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to my UBC family. I wish I could be with you. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe and warm at home, um, that you're caring for each other, even as we care for each other through the wonders of the internet and Zoom meetings and everything else. But warmest blessings and merriest of Christmas wishes to all of you. And I will be glad when it's 2021. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Adam and Leah Dyer to our old friends at University Baptist Church. Sending you tidings of comfort and joy from Cypress, Texas. Hi, I'm Sandy Hasnauer, the Executive Minister of American Baptist Churches of the Rochester, Genesee region, and I am very happy to say Merry Christmas, UBC Columbus. Hope to be able to visit you again soon. Hi, everyone. So one of our scripture readings for tonight is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word.
Merry Christmas from the Cheeseman household to yours, wherever you are. Be safe and wear a mask. Merry Christmas. I miss you guys. Greetings from the Keystone State. Merry Christmas, everyone, and I want to wish you a prosperous new year. I love you guys. Hello, friends at University Baptist Church. I'm Carl Stevens of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, your near neighbor, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. A reading from the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, starting in verse 8 and going through verse 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is Helen Watkins, and this is my husband, Ken. We'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the Arbolas, have a very Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. 2021!
Hey everyone, this is Joseph Grove bringing greetings from Richwood, Ohio. Hopefully we'll be able to see each other in person real soon and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas dear UBC. Merry Christmas to you. Greetings from Zimbabwe. Hello, your BC family. I'm Ronnie. I'm Toby. I'm Anna. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. I hope you're staying safe and doing well, as usual, and also enjoying the um, holiday season. The scripture for the fourth lesson of this Christmas Eve service is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch-dark land, light has dawned. You made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor. Because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned, fuel for the fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness, now and forever. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm Ken Watkins. I'm the Associate Pastor, University Baptist Church. Uh, most of you who are watching this virtual service know that. And uh, if you are new to us, uh, perhaps you're a family of UBC members, or maybe you just stumbled upon us, uh, I want to give you a special welcome. Uh, I wish that I had $10 for every time that I have said or that I have heard said, uh, these are strange times. Uh, but indeed they are. And even in these strange times, or especially in these strange times, we try to hang on to some of the traditions of the past um, we on, that are on staff at the UBC uh, work uh, to, at bringing together the traditions of old, uh, those which will keep us connected with the past, with each other, and with God. Traditions are important. Uh, at their best, uh, they serve as containers uh, that hold the valuables from the past. They help tell the stories and bring back the memories. Uh, we look to them to connect us with the, the, the truth of the past and the reality of the present and the possibility of the future. Uh, traditions help connect uh, the old stories with our stories. Uh, my prayer is that, that in singing the old songs and listening to old and new songs, uh, reading the old scriptures and seeing old friends and meeting new friends that the embers of our hearts will catch the breath of God's Spirit and burn brightly during the through this holiday season and on into the new year. Uh, the scriptures that we read tonight are part of Christmas tradition. Uh, we read from John. Uh, John says that Jesus was the Word and that Jesus was the light. Uh, we read the nativity story from Luke, uh, and we, we read uh, from Isaiah, um, a description of the Messiah, a description uh, that has been, was embraced by Handel and made into to the uh, uh, beautiful choral piece. John said, um, John said that all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness will not overcome it. 
And the writer of John then went on to say that John the Baptist was not the light, but he was he was came to point to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was was coming into the world, and John was was there to say that. Um, you know the Old Testament passage that we read also talks about light. It says the people walked in darkness. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a, in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Uh, Isaiah was, was was describing the Messiah, the kind of Messiah that that um, that he wanted, that he felt that God was was bringing. And um, Jesus identified with that with that image and uh, fleshed out that kind of Messiah. Uh, both these passages talk about the uh, the need for the need for light. That the world is dark, and the, and that there's um, that there we need we we need that the world was in need of of one to bring the light into their lives. That light was important. Now, when I think about darkness, I there are a lot of ways we use the word dark or darkness. Uh, sometimes we just mean it's simply is without light. Um, the sun has gone down. The lamps are all off. The candles are blown out, and um, uh, and that's one of the ways that we use the term darkness. I, I spent a night in a cave with a group of students, at the University of Arkansas, and it was a miserable night. But it, when the lights went out, it was pitch black, and it was not safe to move around. Uh, you could bump your head on the low ceilings. Uh, you could fall. Uh, and uh, and there were bats. The um, an, another way that we use the word or use the, the word dark darkness or dark is that uh, is that we use it to describe the worst of times, the times that we feel frightened, threatened, sad, lonely, sorrowful, grieving, and disappointed. Uh, we describe those as dark days. And I know many of you who are listening to this or watching this video, and I know that there, that as I even as I say this, that your mind probably goes to some dark days. And um, and I hope that as as your mind goes to the dark days or the memories of the dark days, that you will also remember the way that God brought the light into those dark days for you. Uh, some of you may be experiencing darkness right now. It's very common. Um, it's very common to, for us to be transported back to, into, uh, into memories and into, into grief and, to, and, and into sadness during the holidays. Many people are. And I think the, the word of God to us is that, uh, is that God wants to bring light to us. Um, another way that we use the term dark is, um, is when we're confused. Uh, uh, we've... Uh, there's a loss of, of, of insight or direction. We don't know our way. We might say, I was completely in the dark. Uh, you know, I didn't get to have the information I needed. And so that's another way that we use the term darkness. Um, we are entering in, we are in some dark days in our nation. And we are, uh, and according to President Biden, President-elect Biden, uh, we the days that are ahead of us will also will also be dark days. Uh, as even with the discovery, the development of the of the, the vaccine, the COVID nineteen vaccine, uh, st we still we still must um, isolate ourselves, protect ourselves and our neighbors as best we can, um, and. Uh, uh, there will still be many people who will get sick and there will be many people who will die. And so we are in a dark winter, as, as, uh, as President Biden has said. So in this time of darkness, then uh, then we, we will look to God. And we need to look to God for light. Jesus is the light of the world. And so how do we find this? How do we... How do we find this? How do we connect with Jesus and so that the, the light comes into our lives? 
Well, the, for me, there, there are a number of several ways. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you a, a grocery list or shopping or, or giving you orders. I'm, I thought I would just share with you um, some things that have been helpful to me. Uh, one of the first things is, to, is for me to work on this personal, my personal relationship with, with Christ, to, to realize that the, there's the, 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 the Jesus that I've met uh, has brought God into my life and that God is within me and to remind myself of that. That even if the things are, if, if dark if things, if my life is dark and shadowy, that God lives within me and around me. And um, and if 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 I'm in a time of darkness, if it's a time of darkness, either in despair, or guilt, or memories, whatever, whatever it is, I, I'm or I'm afraid of the environment, the situation. Um, then. Perhaps the, the first thing I need to do is to wait and watch for a glimmer of light. Because I believe that, that God knows where we are and that God will bring the glimmer of light eventually. Now, for, while waiting for the light, or even even if, I, if, if I'm following, if Jesus has come to me and, uh, and there's light in my life and I'm beginning to take steps, another, another suggestion that I have for you or, or or, or something that is important for me to remember is that is that I I need to be careful not to pile on more darkness. Often I might find myself in the in the in the stillness of life, uh, guilting myself for things done or said years ago, decades ago, a lifetime ago. Um, sometimes I can almost hear God saying to me. And why are you thinking about this? And I wonder sometimes why I go there. But God has to once again touch me with grace. And the grace becomes the light that shows me the, the direction for, for life and, and elevates my, my spirit. Another important thing that is important to me or, or a step that's important to me when I'm, when I'm searching for the light is to be a student of myself. Pay attention to the things that blind me. Uh, notice how I feel after I've, I've eaten certain things or have drunk certain things. Uh, pay attention to my, my, own, my mood after I watch certain things. If the news makes me dark, cut back on watching the news. If TV dramas, certain TV dramas are negative and, and, uh, and are negative about people or uh, then, then it may be that I need to cut them out because they they could they can they can create darkness for me. If there are dark places for me to go. The fourth thing is or another thing is that I, 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 I is to pray. Uh, and I, I I'm learning and trying to learn how to pray in a, a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm trying to learn to be more co contemplative. Uh, to, to pray quietly, trying to learn how to uh, um, to pray with others. Uh, Thursday night, uh, every Thursday night, we have a, a share prayer time, a Zoom share prayer time, and this has been a rich time for me uh, to to know brothers and sisters in Christ, and also to uh, you know and to uh, uh, and and to participate in in God's touching their lives. Um, uh, also, you might try something new. Um, you know, write down write down the prayer requests of others. Uh, that may not be new to you, but write down the prayer requests and keep it available. You don't have to have a special time to pray to lift to lift others up in prayer. Um, there's also uh, maybe you write your prayers is another is another possibility. There may be there are different things to experiment with. But I have found that that, that praying does praying does uh, help me, even if the prayer is simply being still before God. Uh, read scriptures um, and listen to or listen to scriptures that are read. Uh, read the the writings of other Christians uh, and uh, uh, let their journey let their journey bring me to uh, bring me along and help me to uh, discover 
uh, the light that they have found. Uh, if you're reading scriptures and you say, well, sometimes I just read scriptures and I don't understand it, or sometimes I read scripture and I say, huh, I can't believe that's, that, that, that's what God said. Uh, tell God that. Uh, you can say to God, I don't get it. Uh, God might even say back to you, yeah, uh, that's not really how I intended for it to be written or translated. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but sometimes God and I have those kind of conversations. Uh, another another thing that really helps me is to safely, uh, is the safe way is to, is to get with people. Uh, use Zoom or Messenger or Facebook, FaceTime or Skype or phones or, or Facebook or text or email. Or all the different ways we have of being in touch, even in this time of isolation. Uh, stay in touch with people. Um, learn how uh, learn about uh, how to be a good listener how to learn learn how to be a good listener uh, how to be a good sharer uh, and uh, uh, today uh, as we were taking the garbage cans out to the road uh, or, or saw my neighbor you know and so we and speak to John across the neighbor and over the, across the driveway um, just that little bit of, of human touch um, uh, brought to help to bring light to my life and because uh, I know that John is a caring person and his presence is a reminder of, of God's care um, do acts of kindness even in this pandemic world you can we can still do good uh, we can be generous with money uh, we can uh, give to, um, to our church we can give to our uh, to um, uh, to neighborhood services or our organizations that are doing good for other people um, we can there are some ways to volunteer that are that are, that are fairly safe uh, and we can uh, uh, so uh, to do good for others uh, uh, be nice to people in, that are in cars uh, yeah, smile and wave uh, nurture the community um, Choose uh, words of kindness. Uh, uh, I have found that uh, that what I say often shapes how I feel, and also often either connects with the God that's within me or rebuffs God. So, what's what would what's on your list? What are your ways to connect? with uh, God and allow God's light to shine and make you know, shine in your life during this time of darkness. Now darkness is a time when the light is most obvious. As a child before before digital and before Disney World or the beginning of Disneyland and at the early days of TV when when there wasn't too much spectacular uh, technological uh, um, displays. Uh, one of the highlights of the Christmas season was to drive around and, and look at the lights. Uh, my mother would always say, let's go, let's go look at the lights. And we would pile into the car and dad would drive and we, and we, every, and in all the different towns that I lived in, we, 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 we discovered where the best lights were to, to watch. And, um, but you had to wait. You had to wait until it was dark in order to appreciate the light. And uh, if you went during the day, the lights may, might be on, but you didn't see them very, very, very well. They, didn't, they were not brilliant. But in order to see the lights in all the brilliance, we had to wait for the sun to set because the lights shine their brightest after sundown. People of God, it's, um, it's sundown. It's a uh, time to shine. Tonight, this week, we celebrate the coming of the light. We believe he came as a baby and lived among us. He still lives among us in our lives, in the lives of others, in our world. 
we believe he shows us the love of God and he gives us the capacity to live as, as God's children. And together, together we will be the city of light. Jesus said on the sermon on, in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. And you are a city set on a hill. Let us be that as we celebrate the birth of the one who is the light. Amen. So tonight we've affirmed Christ is the, is the light of the world that comes in t who, who comes into the world and, and, and brings light to us all. If this were a a normal year, a year in which we were worshiping in person, uh, following the homily somewhere near the end of the service. Uh, I would light a candle. And then and from the Christ candle, because Christ lights the light within us, and then I would pass it to someone else. And we would, and she would pass it to someone else. And then we would sing Silent Night. So tonight we sing Silent Night. We invite you to sing Silent Night with us, not with Helen and I, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but with our musicians. And, uh, and remember that you are the light of the world. And that you and that together we are the city set on a hill. May God bless you and give you a Merry Christmas.
Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hello, University Baptist Church. I want to take the time to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. God bless you all. Zena and Oren Newberry, and we're wishing all our friends from UBC a very Merry Christmas. And here's your Christmas treat, Zena. Merry Christmas from the church ladies. People of God, go forth from this time and this place. May the light that has come into the world light your hearts and light your path. As you go into the world, may you take, may you take joy. Amen.